In this last video on the course toolkit, we're going to talk about version control and collaboration with Git and GitHub. So Git is a version control system. It's like track changes features from Microsoft Word, but on steroids. And it's not the only version control system out there, but it's a very popular one. And GitHub is the home for your Git-based projects on the internet. So think about it like Dropbox, but much, much better. We will use GitHub as a platform for web hosting and collaboration and also as our course management system. So think about this figure here. Versioning is a little bit like this. If you were building a home from Lego bricks, you would uh, lay them out layer by layer and you might along the way actually record what was happening uh, at each step. Version control with Git feels a bit more like this, where you have the versions, but then you actually have some human readable messages. The first commit, uh, you, which are the human readable messages you uh, make in a, a repository is always called the first commit or an initial commit. And then after that, you get to choose what you wanna say about it. You could keep these uninformative, but it makes sense to make them informative. Like here in version two, we have built back and front of the base. And then in version three, finished building the base. So we're actually letting the next human who comes after you, that could be you looking back at a project of yours or somebody else you're collaborating with, what happened with each change. And when I say each change, I don't mean every time you make a change to a document, you as a human get to decide where to put these uh, version points. So it's not every single letter you change, it's not every single uh, piece of code you write, but at some point when you feel like, I have added something to this project that is noteworthy or I'm done for the day and I'm going to leave things where it is. It's useful to leave a human readable message along with that commit that you make for that particular version. Why might we need version control? I think if you're not using version control, you very much can end up in a situation like this where you have a document you're working on, let's say, and you know, we as humans, uh, feel like, okay, I'm almost done. I'm going to call this particular version I have final.doc, but then you actually get some maybe revision comments from your advisor and then that becomes final rev2.doc, yada, yada, yada. You go back and forth and at the end, it's everything like final, most final, the best final, and it just keeps going. The thing is these file names are not really very informative because final or final revisions don't really say anything. But if you actually had tagged the changes you made to go between the final and the final two, uh, that could actually be informative if you actually had to go back to them. So how are we going to use Git and GitHub in this class? Uh, we have a course organization. The organization is called IDS S120 for uh, semester 1 2020 course of IDS. And within it are going to be a bunch of repositories. These Think about these as each of the projects that you'll be working with. So it could be a single assignment, it could be an application exercise, it could be just anything that you're working with basically. And uh, when we're working with these, uh, I will prepare these repositories for you where we have um, for each of these um, assignments, you have a repository for yourself. And what you will do is you're going to go to GitHub, find the repository that's named after you, and then say, okay, I'm going to clone this as an RStudio project. So we've talked about creating projects in RStudio, but we've talked about just launching them there within RStudio. This time we're going to be bringing it in from uh, Git, GitHub, and that is called cloning. So we're going to clone them in RStudio, and then we're going to do what we've been showing so far. We're going to use the R programming languages, uh, leveraging functionality provided by our packages and then we're going to version control our files with git so along the way as we make some changes we're going to tag these changes as commits and then every once in a while we're going to push our changes back to the repository uh, which means that um, and you don't have to wait until the very end for doing that you can do that along the way but by the deadline of an assignment your changes need to appear uh, in your repository because what I will be looking at for you is not uh, what's happening in our studio but actually what's happening on github so a few Git and GitHub tips. Um, there are millions of Git commands. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's not millions, but it feels like it. Um, there are a lot of them. 
and very people very few people actually know them all so you're definitely not expected to honestly 99% of the time you're actually going to use get to add commit push and pull and I'm going to show you what I mean by these but it's a very small subset of a million as you can imagine I will be doing Git things and interfacing with GitHub through our studio. But if you Google for help, like how do I do blah, blah in Git, you might come across methods for doing these things in the command line. My recommendation for you would be to skip that and move on to the next resource unless you feel comfortable trying it out. But my goal isn't for you to um, just kind of have to dig through this sort of other ways of interacting with Git, uh, ways that we're not teaching you. There's plenty of resources online that follow uh, working with Git uh, and R and R Studio, and I would recommend that you take a look at those first. Um, there's a great resource for working with Git and R. It's called happygitwithr.com. Uh, some of the content there is a little beyond the scope of this course, so it's uh, formatted as a book. Uh, I don't expect you to read every single chapter of it, but just know that that is a good place to look when you're looking for Git advice that's specific for R and R Studio users. All right, just like the other videos, we're going to end this one with a tour as well. So this time we're going to do a tour of Git and GitHub. And um, for this particular tour, we're only going to take you through a part of this. Um, we're going to create a GitHub account. We're going to verify your GitHub email and we're going to adjust your GitHub settings for a more pleasant GitHub experience. And then next week, we're actually going to do another demo where we're working with R, R Studio, Git and GitHub together, just like a real data scientist, which basically will be your entire workflow all in one place. So let's go ahead and start by creating a GitHub account first. I'm going to github.com and I'm going to choose a username for yourself. You're free to choose whatever you like, but I would recommend something that is close to your real name if you uh, feel comfortable doing so. So here is the student that I had an account for, Florence Nightingale, so I'm gonna stick with that name. Um, I have an email address for Florence, so we're going to put that here. Um, ideally, this should be the same email address that you've signed up for our Studio Cloud for. Um, and if you have an existing account, GitHub account that doesn't match that, that's really not the end of the world. You can still link things up, but I think it is a cleaner experience if everything kind of matches. And let's go ahead and create a password as well, and let's sign up for GitHub. Right now, the account is being created. I'm going to verify by selecting the Spiral Galaxy. Sounds good. I don't want occasional product updates. And I'm going to join a free plan at this point. GitHub Next asks you some questions about how you're going to be using GitHub. You are uh, welcome to answer these or you can skip them, whatever you like. But importantly right now, if you go ahead and check your email, you should see an email from GitHub that says, please verify your email address. And in fact, you should go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and verify the email address. And now we are verified. So this is my GitHub account. I have no activity whatsoever so far. And I can see myself, um, my profile right here, signed in as Florence-Nightingale. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my settings. And I'd like you to do a few things here in your settings. Most importantly, go to the emails tab and then uncheck uh, the box that says keep my email addresses private. Um, this is not by unchecking this, you're not publishing this to the entire world because we are only going to be having you work in private repositories anyway. Um, where only the course teaching team can see your commits. Uh, but this allows us to link your work to your GitHub account. Uh, so if you don't keep this checked, there would be additional stuff you have to do once you get into RStudio to make sure things are linked up properly. So I think this will be a cleaner experience. So that was under settings and then emails. And then I went down and I said, keep my email addresses private. That was checked by default. I unchecked that box. And another thing that I'm going to do now is go to my profile. And it would be ideal if you actually type in your name here. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Um, you don't have to uh, select a verified email to display. You can if you want, but you don't have to do that. Um, something else that would be helpful is if you were to um, actually add a photo for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a photo. This could be your real photo if you like, or it might be something um, like an avatar that you prefer. But if you have a photo that's uploaded here and also on our studio cloud, that's helpful for us because it would then allow us to kind of um, uh, match you up with who you are. So it looks like things that I did did not get saved. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to update my profile. So in a nutshell, I updated my name. I updated my profile picture either to a real picture of you or an avatar that you prefer. And under emails, I uncheck the box that says keep email addresses private. From this point onwards, all you need to do for this week is to uh, submit your GitHub username as part of the uh, get to know you survey where we're collecting some data from you. And so your username is if you go to your profile, whatever you set to be that shows right here and you're going to get the same uh, name showing up in the URL for your user profile as well.